no specific props for today, just whatever you want to have on hand. And we're going to start on our backs. So <clears throat> whenever, oh, sorry, guys. <clears throat> uh, you know, when you wake up with like a really dry throat, you're like, there's 85 cotton balls in my mouth. Let's go to Mexico. Okay, we're going to start on our backs in constructive rest pose. So feet nice and wide, knees together. And if you're feeling extra sleepy this morning, go ahead and take your arms out into a cactus shape. If you feel like you've got a lot going on in your mind, you can put your hands on your belly. Go ahead and close your eyes wherever you're at. Take a nice easy breath in and slow breath out. Easy breath in and slow breath out. Just breathing right now. At any pace, any rhythm that feels soothing for you this morning. So maybe that's really slow. Maybe that's a nice deep belly breath. Or maybe that's noticing the weight of your skeleton on every exhale you take. Just starting off your morning with this focus on your breath. Maybe you can hear the gentle sound of your inhale and exhale. Maybe your mind also notices any other sounds around you. If you need a little bit more focus for the morning, you might even mentally repeat, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. If you can drop all the weight of your bones and muscles into the floor. For just a little bit longer. Maybe after these First few moments, you're able to find a little bit more smoothness to your breath. Maybe at the end of the inhale, or the start of the exhale. A little bit more smoothness at the end of your exhale, and the start of your inhale. When you're ready, reach your arms out to a T from whatever position they're in, palms facing down. Slowly blink your eyes open, let the light back in, let your knees separate, and then go into a windshield wiper with your knees a little bit side to side. So maybe just halfway to the right, halfway to the left. <clears throat> Starting to feel that nice gentleness in your lower spine. A little bit of movement at your ankles, a little release at your glutes. Good. If you'd like to make the twist just a tiny bit bigger, a little farther over to each side, you're more than welcome to. But if you start to feel any pinching or struggling, I'm going to encourage you to hold back just a little bit. Yeah, take one more each way. Make sure your feet are nice and wide. And then slowly bring your knees back up towards the ceiling, <clears throat> preparing for a bridge pose. So feet a little closer, arms down by your side. <clears throat> and I want you to go 
really slow and with your whole inhale as you press through your feet, lift your hips up so you're just on your shoulder blades. Don't interlace your fingers yet. You're gonna feel as if someone's attempting to, no one's going to, slow motion kind of sock you in this humming. You're gonna exhale, roll your spine down. So start from your shoulders, your middle back, your lower back to your sacrum. Nice. Inhale, press back up from your feet. Let your shoulders stabilize you. Look straight to the ceiling and then exhale that slow motion, roll down from your upper back to your lower back. Yeah. Inhale, press up just a tiny bit higher on this bridge. Exhale, go just a little bit slower as you descend. Good, maybe you need to take your feet a little wider to support your skeleton, totally good. Inhale, you'll come up. Exhale, you'll really roll, like you're trying to paint one vertebrae down to the floor at a time. And we've got all the time we need, so please take it. Inhale up into bridge. Exhale, roll your way down. Good, if your knees start to feel sensitive at all, you can turn your feet out to the sides towards 10 o'clock and one o'clock. That might help your knees feel a little easier. And then on these next couple, give a little bit louder, longer exhale so you can really roll down and empty out your lungs. We're gonna be here for another minute or so, just lifting into bridge and rolling back down to your spine, getting all the stale air. You can exhale out of your nose. You guys know you can also exhale out of your mouth. As long as you breathe in through your nose, any exhaling way is all good by me. Now that you've been in this dynamic movement for a little bit, maybe you start to lift a little higher, get a little bit more active in your glutes and your leg muscles, and then exhale, keep that emphasis on rolling down and emptying out your lungs. Just a few more. You can always take a pause for as long as you need. Take a rest. Go ahead and take one final one. Stay up a little longer at the top of your bridge. Still don't interlace your fingers yet because you are gonna roll right back down. But just stay up a little higher. Start to feel a little bit more of that wakefulness in your legs and your glutes. Releasing into the front of your hips. Take about two more breaths, but on that second exhale is when you'll roll yourself back down. Nice and simple. Good. When your sacrum, that lowest part of your spine gets all the way to the floor, go ahead and pick your feet up. Let your shins come parallel to the ground or parallel to the ceiling. Yep. Make sure everything from your Skull, shoulders, spine, and sacrum are fully on the mat, and then stretch your legs straight up to the ceiling. Now it is helpful on this. Some of you know you can make that little diamond shape like you're about to catch a football, touching your index fingers and your thumbs, and you can put that right underneath your lowest spine for support. You can also kind of nestle your forearms underneath your lower back for support. You're gonna go one leg at a time. Inhale, right leg down to hover above the floor. And then exhale, slowly pick it back up to your left leg. Yeah. Inhale, left leg down. Exhale, left leg up. Go at your own breath rhythm as always, just so your leg hovers right above the floor. Yeah, really nice active ankles, everyone. If you're always used to flexing at your ankles, with the soles of your feet to the ceiling. Maybe you try the next few with your feet pointed, toes curled, just to change it up a little bit. Now we are gonna do some belly strength today, yay. So if you get to a point where your muscles are just feeling overly fatigued, overly worked, please take a break. I'd rather you take a break than push through too hard for too long. Go a little slower, inhale, leg down, exhale, leg up. 
Bend your knees as much as you need. If you feel any kind of reverberation or tugging or pulling at your hamstrings or your lower spine. And it's okay to start to feel really warm at your belly, maybe even a little bit at your hip flexors, although you don't want them to take over fully. One leg down, exhale, leg up. Good, just one more time each side and then you'll get to take a breather, but you should be breathing the whole time. Exhale, leg up. Good, and when you're ready, release your arms, bend your knees and slide your legs out into Shavasana. Put your hands right on top of your hips and just take a deep breath out. Just notice all that warmth moving around, swirling around, waking up your belly muscles this morning. Take a couple more deep breaths in and equally deep breaths out. Relax your shoulders, your jaw. Then come back into a bent knee position. You can bring your inner knees together, hands behind your head, elbows wide, super slow pace wise. As you exhale, you'll bring your right elbow and your left knee towards each other. So you'll exhale, lift up, they don't have to touch, and then inhale, lower back down. Exhale, left elbow, right knee, and then inhale, lower down. So you're just trying to go more elbow to knee than knee to elbow. On an exhale, then inhale down. Exhale up, inhale down. Good. So no rush, right? We're not trying to do a certain number or anything like that. It's more about moving with your breath. Exhale into that little twist here and then inhale back down to the floor. Yeah, everybody's got it. But again, try not to get your knee too close in. So ideally, you just want your knee to stack right over your hip and you want your elbow to try to go a little bit more of the way. Yeah, there we go. Take a break whenever you need. We're gonna be here for a nice little bit. Don't be mad at me about it. Just keep going, take breaks when you need. So again, it's exhale to lift, inhale to lower. And your hands aren't behind your head just for decoration. They're there to support the weight of your head so you don't take this into your neck. So really let the weight of your head be heavy and let the strength of your arms help hold your head up. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, feet down. Yep, breaks always as many as you need, as many as you'd like. But don't shy away from that feeling of kind of intense warmth that you might be getting all on the front line of your torso and you keep going side to side. And I promise we're not going to do this the whole hour. Just about two more each side. Inhale down. Again, watch your knee. It likes to come really close to your face. You're trying to keep it stacked right above your hip. The last one each side. Good, and then as you release, release your arms, press up into bridge pose again to counteract that so you can let your hip flexors really open back up, your chest, your breath, your lungs. And this time, if you'd like to interlace your fingers underneath of you, go for it. It feels better to hold the outer edges of the mat or reach towards your ankles. Also great ways to hold bridge pose. Try to breathe right into your lower belly, right into your abdominal muscles. without neglecting the rest of your torso. So still feeling some breath in the sides of your ribs, even into that space between your shoulder blades. Press from your feet, a little contraction of your glutes, last two breaths. Ease in your jaw. Release your arms and use that same really emptying exhale or roll yourself down as if someone's trying to sock you in the stuff. Nice and slow. 
Good, take a moment. Again, everything from your head to the lowest part of your spine stays on the floor as you reach your legs back up. Arms down by your side so you can, palms to the floor, so you can use your arms for a little bit of support and leverage. Cross your right ankle over your left. Yep, there you go. Now, it's okay to bring your legs a little bit into your face on this one. You're gonna inhale, lift your legs up, kind of like you're attempting to go into a very small shoulder stand. And then as you exhale, you switch the cross of your ankles and come back down with your spine on the floor. So if you wanna watch, if you haven't done this one before, you're gonna inhale, lift up, exhale, switch your ankles, come down. Inhale, lift up, exhale, switch your ankles, come down. Yep, inhale, up, exhale. It's that control down. You don't wanna do it quickly. Yep, inhale and exhale. It's not an easy one, and you can use your arms a little bit to help you with that extra lift and to keep the down motion nice and slow. Yeah, keep going. Again, promise we're not gonna do this forever. Inhale, you're lifting up. Exhale, you're switching your ankles as you bring yourself down. Right, and gravity's working against you on the down action, so you really have to slow it down. Nice, everybody. Give it two more. And then after your second one, uncross your ankles, come back into Shavasana, straight legs, arms by your side, feel free to close your eyes. And just take a deep sigh out. Nice full breath in. And a deep sigh out. One more. Good. Bend your knees, feet to the floor. Open your eyes. You're gonna lean over to one side. It doesn't matter which one, but you're gonna prop your head up with your hand. Mm -hmm. So you're lying on your side. It might be easier to point towards your screen so you can see. Bottom knee, bottom knee especially bent, top knee can stack on top for a bit. Pull your top knee in towards your corresponding armpit. So if you're bringing your right knee in, it's going towards your right armpit. Take your right arm on the inside of your leg, peace sign fingers to your big toe, and then slowly inhale. Just begin to give a little bit of straightening. Doesn't need to go full throttle. But make a little bit more space from the top of your shoulder to the bottom of your ear, there you go. And then gently bring your leg a little closer in towards the side of your head. Yeah. Just a different way to awaken your hamstrings this morning. Really flex through your ankle, press up and out through your heel. Last two breaths. Good, slowly release your big toe, bend your knee. And now you're really gonna stack both knees on top of each other. Open up into a spinal twist with your hands behind your head. Yeah, so one knee stacked on top of the other. You're only gonna do this two times. Hands are back there for support, not just for looks. Exhale, lift up your head to your shoulders as much as you can. So you're in this twist, lifting up, and you're just holding. You're holding the shape, not holding your breath and you're feeling your upper rib get a little closer towards your hip on whichever side you're on. Good, breathe in, exhale, lower down. Ah. Try to relax both shoulders and just one more time, use that exhale, pick yourself up as much as you can, supporting the weight of your head. Don't hold your breath. I don't want to be silent wherever you are. Breathe in and breathe out. One more inhale. Exhale, lower down. Good, you're gonna take your time to switch to the other side. I'm just gonna do a little pivot so you guys can still see me. You can just roll to the other side, but if you can't see the screen and that's gonna be a hindrance to you, just do a little flip, a little 180. Hand supporting your head, starting with your knees bent, knee towards your arm. <coughs> Arm on the inside of your leg, peace sign fingers to your big toe. Inhale, lengthening up through your leg. 
Breathing fully in through your nose, out your nose, out your mouth. Good, relax that top shoulder. So whichever arm is extended, pull the top of your shoulder down from your ear. And be nice to your hamstrings, but maybe you can bring your leg just a little closer towards your side. Breath in and breath out. Relax through your jaw. Good, one more inhale. Exhale, release your big toe, bend your knee. Now you're gonna stack your knees right on top of each other. You can bring them up a little bit more and then open up into your spinal twist with your hands behind your head. Only two times, breathe in. Exhale, find that nice little lift. Elbows are wide. That interlace of your hands is pretty strong, holding up the weight of your skull. Yeah, there you go, good. And just really working your rib a little bit closer to your hip. Breath in and breath out. One more. Exhale, lower down. Relax your jaw. Notice if you're holding tightness or tension there. And then one more time. Breath in. Exhale, lifting up. Try to keep your knees still stacked right on top of each other. And it's especially hard to lift that one shoulder blade up off the ground. Just give it a try. One more inhale. And then exhale, lower down. Good, release your arms. Just take a moment. And then you can roll to your side, come up into tabletop all fours. Knees separated, let your hips go over to the left as you look back through your right heel. Inhale, come to the center, hips to the right, look back for your left heel, and just find that side to side motion. And it's very similar. You're trying to feel your rib and your hip get a little closer and then to the other side. So one side of your ribs expanding while the other is contracting. Feel free to soften into your elbow. Breathe in and out. One more time each side. And then as you come to the center, I'm going to turn to face you all, gate pose. Left leg out to the side, straight out from your hip. So your leg shouldn't be too far forward or too far back. And then walk your hands out in front. Just back. Slight tuck of your chin into your chest. Yep, got it. If your shoulders feel extra tight today, widen your hands. Breathe in and breathe out. Good, last breath in. All the air out. Good, slowly walk your hands in. You can take the long edge of your mat, fold it over to put your knee on. And I'm gonna encourage you to tuck your right toes as you walk over to the side and take a side body stretch. So your right hand's under your right shoulder. Yep, it's like you're, it feels like you're that piece of toast in a toaster. Mm -hmm. Really tuck your right toes to lift, to keep your balance as you lift your left foot just a tiny bit. Tiny bit up off the floor. Yep, and then left foot down. Good, lift your left foot again. And then this time as you exhale, bring your left knee and left elbow together in front of your chest. Inhale, stretch it back out to the side. You got it. Exhale, bring it in. Nice and slow. Inhale, stretch it back to the side. So a few times, exhale to the middle. Inhale, reach it long. Yep. Try to have an active ankle, whether that's a flexed ankle or a pointed ankle, pointed foot. Inhale, expanding. Exhale, finding that kind of coiling, contracting action. Beautiful, everybody. Keep going. If you'd like to kick in some ujjayi breath, all in and out through your nose, nice time to do it right here. Again, I promise it won't last forever. Nothing does. Last two. Try not to rush it just to get it over with.
And then you can allow your left foot to come back to the floor, side body stretch with a little weight of your left arm. Good, exhale, left hand down, crawl it around and switch knees. Left knee in, right leg out, Parangasana, gate pose. Arms walk forward and exhale, hips back. Starting with that first kind of inner thigh stretch, hip socket release. Wide hands or onto your elbows for support. Breath in and breath out. Try to relax your jaw. That might mean opening and closing your mouth a little bit. Last breath. Slowly come back up onto your hands, walking yourself over to the side. Left hand right underneath your shoulder, right arm over your head. Don't get ahead of yourself. I know you know where we're going, but just enjoy the side body stretch for a moment. Good, make sure you feel nice and supported with your left hand. Nice and supported with your left toes, tuck them under. And then first, just the slight lift with your right leg, right foot. Just so your body knows where you're going and then foot down. Inhale again, lift it up. And then exhale, elbow to knee right in front of your chest. Inhale, stretch it back out to the side with your foot hover. Exhale in the middle. Inhale, reaching it out, taking all the time you need. Exhale, right in the center. Inhale, reaching it back out to the side body stretch. Do something active with your right foot, point flex. Curl your toes, flex your toes, whatever you want. Then try not to just rush through. Try to use your entire inhale to reach back out, your entire exhale to coil back in. Last two. Take your time. And then slowly reach back out like right side body stretch. Nice, exhale, right hand down, bring it back to the center. You get on your mat, come back into tabletop all fours. And then your first downward dog, lift your knees, find a momentary hovering table and then stretch it on back. Relax the weight of your head and take a deep breath out. And if you like stillness in your first downward dog, Lovely. If you like a little movement, a slight pedaling in your knees, lovely, take it. Like too much on your shoulders. You won't know what to do. Child's pose, puppy pose. If it bothers your wrists, elbows and forearms down to the floor into dolphin. Let a deep breath in. Exhale, child's pose. Support your forehead, whether you have a block handy or you just use your own body, stacking your forearms, stacking your palms, sitting back towards your feet, breathing out. Letting yourself settle, doing a little bit less. And breathing a little bit more. Softening a little bit farther into the ground. And then taking one big sigh out. Inhale, move yourself back into tabletop. Exhale, second downward dog. You guys know I'm a stickler about keeping your knees bent, so don't forget it. That little bit of softness in your knees will go a long way for your hamstrings and your lower spine. 
Nice, feet all the way together. Right leg lifts as you inhale, nice and slow. Take all of your in-breath to do so. Take all of your out-breath to step your foot between your hands, pause. Yep, runner's lunge. Pretty big bend in your left knee. So you're just on your left toes. As you walk your hands up to your right thigh, stay leaning forward and then interlace your fingers behind you. But stretch your knuckles back, then you can re-extend your left leg. Yep, leaning forward lunge. Inhale, bend your back knee, stack your shoulders right above your hips. Really hug your shoulder blades together and then inhale, lean forward again. So you're gonna come up on an inhale with your back knee bent. Exhale and pause. Inhale, lean forward, straighten your front leg. So do that just about three times. And it's okay to feel your right leg really working and efforting. The bend in your back knee helps take the strain and struggle out of your lower spine. And so does that lean forward. Good, on your last one, release your hands as you're leaning forward down to the floor. Take your time to take your right foot all the way back up to the ceiling, three-legged dog. Woof, woof. Roll your right ankle around one direction. And other way. Good. Bring your right knee down to the floor, right under your hip, and then lift your left leg up like you're going into bird dog with your left leg. Breath in, breath out. Now tuck your right toes under, three-legged dog with your left leg up and back. You got it. Breathe in, use your whole exhale, step your left foot forward, take your time. You want that solid foundation for your runner's lunge. Bend your right knee, walk your hands up to your thigh. Take your arms behind you, interlace your fingers, stretch your knuckles back, still leaning forward, everybody. Yeah, there you go. So you're at a 45 degree angle. Then an inhale, straighten your back leg, still leaning forward, first one. Inhale, come up as you bend your back knee, chest lifting, exhale to stay. Inhale, lean forward, straighten your back leg. So you're just moving on your inhale, staying for your exhale. Inhale, moving again. Exhale, pausing again. Three more times. Good. And your left quad is working. Don't neglect your upper body, right? Your fingers are interlaced so you keep that nice brightness in your chest. Last one. And when you get into that leaning forward position, release your hands to the floor. Left leg up to the ceiling, three-legged dog. Roll your left ankle one direction, one way, clockwise. The other way. Good, then your left knee comes down right underneath your hip, right leg behind you as if you're going into bird dog, but just with your right leg. Big toe and hip point is straight down. Left toe tucked under, three-legged dog, right leg up. Good, exhale, right foot down. Walk your feet halfway to your hands. As your hands walk back to your feet, come up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stretch out and up. Take your time. You can even tip your head slightly back, look at your hands. And then exhale, fold back down to your feet, bent knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, everybody's favorite plank pose. Step your feet back. And you can be on your hands, high plank, or on your elbows, dolphin plank, if that feels better. And get comfortable here. Even though it's not the most comfortable pose, we're here for just a little bit. Relax your jaw. Press the floor away. Nice, everybody. 
And I don't want you to look like a wet piece of pasta. It should be like pasta before it's gone into the boiling pot of water. So pretty sturdy in your arms, your legs, your behind up to the ceiling nice. You can always put your knees down. Again, don't be mad at me about it. Just a few more breaths, you got it. It's okay to feel a little shaky, a little sweaty, a little huffing and puffing. Nice job sticking with it. One more breath in. Exhale, knees down. Woo, come on to your belly. All the way down. Five cobras. Keep them pretty small. Inhale up. Exhale down. Minimal press into your hands. Nice job looking straight to the floor, keeping the back of your neck long and smooth. Good, then take a break after your fifth one. And just depending on what your energy's feeling like today, what your body's feeling like today, you choose, you either go back to child's pose or you go through a plank. Don't look at what I'm doing. You pick which one you want to take. Yep. I'm not going to move until everybody moves. Yep, there you go. Nice. And then you'll find your way to downward facing dog. Keep the distance between your hands and your feet in that Goldilocks ratio. So not too long, not too narrow. Just right. Feet halfway to your hands. And right away as your hands walk back, you come into that half lifted position and hold. My hyper extenders for your knees, bend them. There we go, thank you. Long neck looks straight at the floor. We're here for a little bit. Reach your arms back behind you, palms up towards the ceiling. A little bit more weight into the balls of your feet and your toe pads. Take your time, reach your arms forward and up, palms touch over your head. And then exhale back into the half lift position, palms up towards the ceiling. And then repeat, inhale, come up, press from your feet. Exhale, halfway, palms up towards the ceiling, arms by your sides. Just a few more, inhale up. Exhale, halfway. So now you're simultaneously, right, finding that nice extension of your spine, but also using your back muscles a little bit more, which are the teammates to your belly muscles. Bend your knees so you don't get into that connective tissue. You want to be into the more muscular tissue of your legs. Last two, inhale up to stand. Exhale, halfway down, palms to the ceiling. And then forward fold, deep breath out. Nice work, everybody. Good, right foot stays towards the top-ish of your mat. Left leg goes a little further back and bring your left knee down. And you can choose if you wanna be more in this kind of parallel position with your front thigh, perpendicular with your back thigh, all good here. If you want a little bit more for the front of your left hip, you can sneak your knee back as you come up into a low runner's lunge. Mm -hmm. So your right foot is forward. If your left foot's forward, no big deal. Just make sure you remember that. Take your left arm across, so your forearm's on the outside of your right thigh, and then you're gonna twist and look over your right shoulder. It doesn't really matter what you do with your right hand. You can wrap it behind you. You can put it on your right hip. But I want you to think about being tall on your inhale and twisting as you exhale. Yep, so you're twisting towards your front leg. Deepening your breath. Unwind on an inhale. Exhale, hamstring your front foot. Just a little bit of a moment and half splits because our hamstrings always need attention. Toes up. 
chest up, right? You can even work your balance and not have your hands on the floor. So I know you guys are super familiar with this shape, so if you need it to be a little different, arms out to a T. And it actually requires you to drag your front heel towards you and get a little bit more into your calf, but I don't want you to feel too much in the back of your knee. There you go. One more breath in. Exhale, hands come down. You're gonna do a 180 to get to the other side. So you can come through a little lunge, pivot to a wide-legged forward fold, and then over to that other short edge of your mat. Yep, yep, yep. Back knee down, either straight under your hip or a little farther behind as you walk Walk your chest up right. Good. This time your right arm crosses in front of you. Relax your right shoulder and twist towards your front leg. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, turn right from your belly button. And stay here for around four rounds of breath. Breathe in. Keep breathing out. One more. Releasing on an inhale. Let your hands string your front foot. Send your hips back. Just about two breaths. Ah, actually longer than that. Let's go five breaths. Maybe you work your balance, arms out to a T. Dragging your left heel back towards your right leg. Good. Relax your jaw, everybody. Pull your shoulders down away from your ears. Keep your neck long and extended. Last breath. <sighs> Hands come down. Wide-legged forward fold. Toes the same direction. And this is going to be your upside down time. So if this is the posture for you, you're just going to hang upside down right here. Wide-legged forward fold. If that feels like too much on your head, Right, you can take a wide downward dog, walking your hands far out in front of your shoulders. If you have an inversion practice, you're near a wall and you wanna take handstand or headstand, I'm gonna give you a good 90 seconds to go where you need to go. If you wanna lie on your back, take your legs up, shoulder stand, also an inversion, good. Stay with your breath in and out. I know that's the challenge is to remember to keep your breath smooth. And again, you've got time. So if you're in wide legged forward fold and your, your hips are feeling creaky, you can do a little skandasana side to side movement. Not that we want to overly multitask in a posture but it's okay to find a little freeing movement so you can stay with it. Yeah. Good, about five more breaths wherever you're at. And really, because you're upside down, you wanna take the bottom tips of your shoulder blades up to the ceiling, right? It's easy, your shoulders kind of move down and gravity moves them towards your earlobes, but you need to counteract that to keep your neck nice and long. Good, take your last full breath, and then you'll pivot yourself over to your right foot in a runner's lunge, leaning forward. Stay with the lean, but interlace your fingers behind you. So you wanna take the funny grip, the opposite finger, opposite thumb on top. This one, you're gonna stay leaning forward the whole time. Exhale, bend your back knee. Inhale, pause. And then your next exhale, you're gonna step your feet together as if you're going into chair pose and switch legs. So again, exhale, bend your back knee. Step your right foot up. Step your left foot back. And you're gonna keep going one foot at a time. You always start with a bent knee and your feet land, both knees are bent. Good. Try not to let your chest be too far forward. It's not like a forward fold. You do want to have some elevation about that 45 degree angle. Good. 
Good, just to keep some activity in your legs. Keep them moving and grooving to get you going this Friday. Take two more each side, everybody. And then when you're done, forward fold. No hurry, don't cheat yourself. Make sure you do both sides. Hang it down, relax your arms. Deep breath out. And then find your downward dog. Use your whole in-breath, left leg up, three-legged. Exhale, left knee down, right underneath your hip. You need to bend your right knee to do that. And then extend your right leg behind. So left knee down, right leg up behind, there you go. You're gonna take your right foot to the back left corner of the room you're in, cross it over, hands to the top right corner, and then slide back, bring your elbows on the floor so you're in the cousin of the pigeon. But it's not full on pigeon. Your left heel can be towards your right thigh. Keep your back leg active, press back through your heel. Knee breaths out. Slow breath in. So it's just as much about your outer left hip as it is the front of your right thigh, your hip flexor. Last two breaths. And then come up onto your hands. You can gently lift your leg and come back into that bird dog formation just with your right leg. Tuck your left toes, three-legged dog, right leg up. Good, and then right knee down. Also bend your left knee so you get your right knee right under your hip. Left leg behind, other side. Yep, yep, cross it over to the back right corner of the room you're in. Hands to the top left. So you're diagonal on your mat, and then slide it on back. Elbows down to help your shoulders relax. Breathe in. Keep pressing back through your left heel. Left knee is lifted and active. Feeling the front of your left hip a little bit more spacious. And the muscles surrounding your right hip also getting some space. Doesn't mean it's comfortable in the moment, so that's why we breathe. Unlock your jaw. One more breath. Get all your air out. Take your time from your elbows to your hands. You can point your fingers forward. Come back into that bird dog formation with your left leg. Yep, both knees down. Sit over to one side. Oh, you made it to the ground and take your feet out in front. Yay. Good, give a little movement at your knees. Just really to release the muscles at the back of your legs. Flex into your feet, sit up nice and tall. And then exhale, just a little lean forward. It's more from your hips than it is from your upper body. And if you get tempted to turtle back, arms out to your sides. Yep, if you've got a yoga strap and you want to put it around your feet, you're welcome to. If you do want to have your hands to your feet, your calves, your knees, anywhere along your leg line, right? You never have to touch your toes. That's perfectly good. Staying a little bit lifted in your chest. Yep. A little tuck of your chin. You can even touch the back of your neck. It should feel smooth. You shouldn't feel as if there's a bunch of your skin bunching up on each other. That means your head's too far back. One more breath in. All your air out. And then bring your hands in. One reverse table or one reverse plank. If you've got a lot going on with your shoulders, I'm gonna encourage you to go reverse table. Fingers forward, pressing through your feet and your hands. If your shoulders feel all good today, you can keep your feet together. 
and press up into reverse plank. Good, try not to throw your head back, right? I want you to feel, again, all the skin at the back of your neck bunching up. One more breath in. Exhale, slowly bring your glutes down. Yep, bend your knees, scoot your bum forward, and then roll onto your back, hug your knees in either towards your chest, or you can hug them wide out towards your armpits. Oh, rock around a little side to side. Right and left. Circles might feel nice, kind of massaging into that lowest portion of your back. Or your upper body meets your lower body. Switch directions, so circles the other way. And then come back to the middle. Feet down, bridge pose again, right? It's kind of like the bookends to our practice today. So press through your feet, lift through your hips. Option to interlace your fingers underneath you and do a little shift side to side so your upper arms come a little closer. Yep, the feet can be as wide or as hip distance as you need, but just not too, too narrow. Make a little space between your chest and your chin. You can even just, you don't have to move your head, but you can turn your eyes down and watch your belly move up as you inhale and soften down as you exhale. If that makes you feel like you're gonna go cross-eyed, don't do it, close your eyes and just detect the movement of your belly. Don't forget about your glutes, contract them to help you stay lifted. Relax your jaw. One more breath in. Start to release your arms and then do that slow motion roll down as you exhale. Nice and easy. Nice and easy, good. Okay, take your feet as wide as your mat, inner knees together. Then take your hands, the bottom of your palms, kind of at your wrists, right to the top of your hips, the top of your thighs, and you're gonna press forward. So you're pressing at the top of your thigh bones, just forward towards the edge of the mat where your toes are. And then relax a second. Again, just a little press at the top of your thighs, you're still in constructive rest pose. So your knees are together. Good, and then relax that little effort. One more time, pressing forward with your thighs. Palms right at the top of your thigh bones, hip creases. And then relax. Separate your knees. Cross your right calf in front of your left shin and let your knees fall out to the side. So it's like you're sitting cross-legged. And put your hands anywhere on your body, your chest, your belly, your hips, behind your head, whatever feels good. And just focus on a softer breath out. <sighs> Easier feeling at your hips. And again, a soft breath out. Starting to let go a little bit of your effort, especially muscularly. Two tiny changes here. Lift your knees up, switch your shin, which one's in front, and then you can allow your knees to come back out to the sides. That's your first change. And then the second one, change where your hands are. As you continue to let go of your muscular effort. Start to focus less on your breathing.
Let your body take it over. And just like we did at the beginning of practice, begin to notice the sounds around you. Whatever might be in your space this morning, be right outside your walls that you can hear. You can still pay a little bit of attention to the sound of my voice. And you can take in all this auditory information and still feel pretty calm, maybe even a touch more relaxed. You're welcome to stay in the shape you're in for the next few minutes for Shavasana, or you can transition slowly into any other shape, or you can fully rest. You can unwind your legs, or you can move your legs into a butterfly shape. I just want you to get comfortable. In a physical way, when your body feels comfortable and safe, your mind can follow that same path, feeling comfortable with stillness and safe as you rest. You might need a few long exhales to let yourself feel that either mentally or physically. Any as you need. Slow breath in and out. Start to move your head side to side. And bring your head back to still and center. Bend your right knee, let your right toe find the floor and pause. Left knee, left foot down, and pause. Take your time to roll on to one side, making a little pillow for your head with your upper arm. Letting yourself slowly transition from that sense and space of rest to your side. Take a deep breath in, 
that long breath out. And then from your side, come up to sit comfortably, take your time. Nice and tall with your chest. Bring your hands together at heart center, palms and all 10 fingers touch. And we'll end practice with three easy breaths all together. In and out. Last one. moment to thank yourself for the energy and the effort to practice this morning. And as always, it's a pleasure and an honor to get to guide you all on your mat. Thank you so much. When you're ready, you can release your hands. Open your eyes. Happy Friday. And Sunday at 7 p.m., I'm going to lead a 30-minute meditation. So if you guys want the link to that I'm pretty sure everyone either has my phone number or my email. Just send me a message and I can send you that if you want to meditate on Sunday. But everyone have a great Friday and a great weekend. And I'll see you guys all again soon. Yay! Bye, Larry. Sally, are you wearing all purple today? I am. I love it. Purple Friday. Thanks.